In this video for Computer Science 9618 AS level, we're going to take a look at images and calculating the file size for images. So let's go ahead and uh, dive right in. We need to know some vocab before we can answer these past exam questions. Vocab is the most important thing to know in computer science, uh, especially when you're taking that paper one exam. If you don't know the vocab, how in the world are you supposed to answer the questions? So by knowing some simple vocab, we can be prepared to tackle those questions. The first one is pixel. Now this is the smallest unit of an image. We can't be breaking it down any further than a pixel. That's the furthest we can break an image down. If you don't know what a pixel is, think about a sheet of graph paper. All those little squares that make up the graph paper, well, there are little squares that make up an image, and we call those little squares a pixel. We also need to know image resolution. This is the total amount of pixels that make up an image. Simply find the area of pixels. Count the length, multiply it by the width, and you get the area of the pixels that you need to answer the question. Now, bit depth. This can be a little tricky at first, so I'm going to make it as clear as possible and easy to understand. It is how many bits each pixel takes up or requires. Now, it directly impacts the amount of colors available per pixel. And that brings us to the word color depth. This is how many colors are available for each pixel, and that is dependent solely upon the bit depth. These two are related, and we'll take a look in just a few moments at exactly how they are related. Now, the formula for calculating file size is simply image resolution, the total amount of pixels, times the bit depth, which determines how many colors there are. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at a past exam question. So the finished logo is 500 pixels by 1,000 pixels. Perfect. I know I'm going to multiply those two numbers together. All I need is the bit depth. And uses 35 different colors. Estimate the file size for the logo. Give your answer in kilobytes. Show you're working. Uh, I don't see bit depth here. So... We have 35 colors, but how many bits do we need for that? And how are we supposed to figure that out? With a simple formula where 2 to the power of x equals the amount of colors. Now, that is where x is represented as the bit depth. Now, you may be saying, well, okay, but 2 to the power of x doesn't have a whole number that equals 35. What in the world am I supposed to do? Are we supposed to do 2 to the power of, you know, 4 point something, 5 point something until we get to 35? You don't have to do that. It doesn't have to come out to exactly 35. Let's work it out. 2 to the power of 1. That gives me two colors with a bit depth of 1. 2 to the power of 2. That gives me four colors with a bit depth of 2. I keep going. 2 to the power of 3. That gives me eight colors with a bit depth of 3. 2 with a bit depth of 4 gives me 16 colors. That's not enough for 35 colors. Bit depth of 5 gives me 32 colors. That is not 35 colors. So I simply keep going to the next one. A bit depth of 6 will give me 64 colors, which is enough. So each pixel can have at least 35 colors. So now that I know that, I can answer this question. So I'm, I know my bit depth is 6. I know my formula is image resolution times bit depth. So I'm going to do 500 times 1,000, it gives me 500,000 pixels. All I need to do is multiply it by 6. That gives me 3 million bits. Well, I need to go from bits to bytes, and then bytes to kilobytes. So, 3 million bits divided by 8, that gives me 375,000 bytes. It wants the answer in kilobytes, though. So I'm going to divide that by 1,000, and my answer is 375 kilobytes. Just like that, I just picked up four points out of 75 on my paper one exam. Let's take a look at another one. A company is designing a website. The company creates a four color bitmap image for the website as shown. I'm gonna pause right there and I'm gonna say, you know what, I need four colors. I'm gonna start calculating the bit depth because I'm gonna need to know that. So off to the side, I start calculating that. Two to the power of one is two colors. Two to the power of two, that gives me four colors. I now know the bit depth, and that answers A part one. State the minimum number of bits needed to represent each pixel. Two bits are required. Now that I know that, 
I can calculate the minimum file size. I count the pixels, one, two, three, four, five, six. I count them vertically, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know there's 36 pixels. 36 times two, the bit depth, gives me 72 bits. When you do 72 divided by eight, my answer is nine bytes. Now, if you leave it at 72 bits, because it doesn't tell us what we have to convert it to, 72 bits or nine bytes, both of these would be acceptable. And we just picked up four out of 75 points on this exam. However, there's part B, which is worth another four points, allowing us to pick up more than 10% of the points possible on the paper one exam. So let's dive into this one. The company takes a photograph of their office to put on the website. That's fine. The photograph has a resolution, ah, important, uh, important information here, of 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. Perfect. I'm going to multiply those together. Two bytes per pixel are used to represent the colors. Two bytes per pixel. Now here, they have already have given us the uh, bit depth as bytes, so we don't have to calculate the bit depth here. When we are given bytes per pixel, we do not have to solve bit depth. There's no need to divide by eight to get the bytes because we're already at bytes. This makes it 10 times easier. Yes, the problem is more complex, but the work is easier for us. So we do 1,000 times 1,000, we get 1 million pixels. Now, I'm gonna multiply that by two bytes, not bits, that gives me two million bytes. I gotta get two megabytes. Well, two million, when I'm at bytes and I divide by 1,000, that gives me the kilobytes. All I have to do is divide by 1,000 again, which will get me to megabytes, and the answer is two megabytes. We don't have to mess around with dividing by eight for this one, makes it 10 times easier. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Let's take a look at another one. The designer creates a six color bitmap image. Right there, I see six, let's start calculating that bit depth. Two to the power of one is two, a bit depth of two gives me four colors, a bit depth of three gives me eight colors. The minimum number of bits needed to represent each pixel, three bits per pixel. Now that I know the bit depth, I can calculate the minimum file size. I count the amount of pixels, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then again, one, two, three, four, five, six. I know six times six is 36 pixels. I do 36 times three, because that's my di bit depth, which gives me 108 bits. I divide that by eight, and I get 13 and a half bytes. Again, I could leave it as a 108 bits if I wanted to, because it doesn't tell us to show it in bits, bytes, or uh, whatever. So we can leave it as bits or bytes. Either way would be acceptable. All right. If you would like, you can pause here and give this one uh, a go. The designer takes a photograph to put on the poster. The photograph has a resolution of 50,000 pixels by 50,000 pixels. That is quite the image right there. The colors are represented using four bytes per pixel. My God, this is a huge image. Anyway, let's keep going. So we do 50,000 times 50,000, we get 2.5 billion pixels. Yeah, 2.5 billion. We know there's four bytes per pixel. So I'm simply gonna multiply that out and I get 10 billion bytes. So um, let's see here, that would be 100,000 million. Yeah, 10 billion bytes. 10 billion divided by 1,000 gives me 10 million kilobytes. It wants me to show the answer in gigabytes. That's fine. 10 million divided by 1,000 that will get me from kilobytes to megabytes. So I have 10,000 megabytes. If I divide by 1,000 again, that'll take me from megabytes to gigabytes. And 10,000 divided by 1,000 gives me my final answer, 10 gigabytes. And just like that, again, on a separate exam, we picked up more than 10% of the amount of points possible before we even move on to question number two. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next programming video.